Hi, and welcome to Tellurium Tutorials. In this video, I will show you how to compute the steady state of two different systems. One will be composed of irreversible reactions, and the second will be composed of reversible reactions. Here I have a system composed of three irreversible reactions. I am now going to plot the reaction rates of each reaction over time. When I run the program, we can see that the first reaction rate is constant, because the concentration of species A is fixed at 10, and the rate law for that reaction step is 0 0.1, the production of B will proceed at a rate of 1, the product of the initial concentration and the rate law. And the second, reaction rate, the second and third reaction rates approach this constant value of 1 as time increases. Once all three reaction rates have reached this common value of 1, the system will be considered at steady state. Steady state is defined when all three re rates of reaction are equal, therefore there are no macroscopic changes observable in that system. Now that we have seen how all three reaction rates in the system approach the same value when steady state is reached, we may want to see what the individual species concentrations are at this point in time. There are two possible ways to do this. First, we can simply just print out what the species concentrations are. I will do this by going print r dot a comma r dot b comma r dot c. When I run this again, we can see that a is at 10, b is at this new value, and c is at a new value as well. So there is a second way we can do this. We can go print r dot get floating species concentration. This function gets the species concentrations at any given point in time. In this instance, it's going to get the species concentrations after this entire simulate has run. When we run this again, we can see that both methods for printing the species concentrations have returned the same information. Now that we have seen how to get the species concentrations at a time when we think the reaction is at steady state, we should examine a tellurium function that allows us to compute when the steady state will occur. This function is called r.getSteadyState. First, I will print a string that says closeness to and then I will go comma r.steadyState I spell it right, that would help. When I run this it will return this very, very tiny number that tells us the computer has gotten this close to this true steady state value. After running the r.steadyState function, we can now print the species concentrations again. And now when we run this, we can see that the predicted species concentrations are quite close to the observed ones when we let the function run for a long time. However, this time, the computer did a prediction of what the steady state would be, rather than have us run the program for a long amount of time. The r.steadyState function is handy just for that reason. It allows us to predict what the steady state will be, rather than having to run a model for an excessive amount of time in order to observe when the steady state will occur. Now that we have seen how to get the species concentrations at steady state, and to compute what the steady state would be of a system made up of irreversible reactions, Let's do it with a system made up of reversible reactions. I'm going to add reversibility as I did in the previous video. Now when I run the function again, we can see that the new steady state occurs at a lower rate than the previous situation where the reactions were all irreversible. In this case, that is because the defining reaction is the first one, and that is because as there's production of B, there's also reverse production of A. Therefore, the net production of B will be lower than in the previous case. So, the overall reaction rate of the production of B will be lower. And again, we have used both methods of printing out what the observed species concentrations are at our steady state, how far the computer got to predicting the steady state, and what the predicted species concentrations would be at steady state. 
Now you know how to get species concentrations when a system made up of either irreversible or of reversible reactions proceeds to steady state. You also know how to use the steady state function to compute what the supposed steady state would be. Thank you for watching.